Hallelujah. Amen. We're today in our second part of the school of the seven spirit of God and evangelism. Today we talk about the spirit of the Lord and healing. So God wants to do healing and evangelism through the seven spirits of the Lord. And so today we have to understand the importance of the spirit of the Lord. Because Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And he said, out of his fullness, we all receive grace upon grace, gift upon gift, favor upon favor. It's out of the fullness of the spirit. And the spirit of the Lord is part of the seven spirits of God. Okay, when we have the menorah here, there are seven candles. The main one is the Spirit of the Lord. And they have different colors. The main one is green. And so we will later go over all of them, but now you see that. This is a picture of the seven spirits of God According to Revelation 4, verse 5, it says, Seven spirits of God are burning before the throne. And so the menorah, or the seven arm candlestick, is a picture, prophetic picture, of the seven spirits of God which are burning before the throne. And the main one is the spirit of the Lord. Out of this one, the rest work. And we see the word, the Spirit of the Lord, all through the Old Testament. It said the Spirit of the Lord God was upon Samson. And he took the enemies down. It said the Spirit of the Lord was upon King David. And we see it all through the scriptures that God did mighty things to the Spirit of the Lord. And so Jesus Christ, we will learn today from the scripture, said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And His ministry flowed therefore from the Spirit of the Lord and the seven spirits of God. His ministry flowed out of those realms. So today, God is saying, just like last time, come up higher. We understand about the Holy Spirit, but today we have to come up higher to the Spirit of the Lord. Now there's one Spirit, but it comes, it comes in many ways. So the Holy Spirit in His fullness comes in seven ways. That is why God gave to Moses this to make. So we would understand it's one Spirit, it's one piece of gold but seven flames and the seven fires before the throne of God but it comes from God because God is one God is Father, Son and Spirit but also the fullness, the seven spirits are in God Hallelujah Amen. One day I had an amazing encounter I had an encounter with the Spirit of the Lord I was in my spirit taken up into the heavens and I encountered the Spirit of the Lord. But it was an amazing encounter. Because I experienced the great love of God. I encountered the Father heart of God. In the main Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord. I was overwhelmed by Abba Father, His love. He touched my heart so deep. And so I knew that the Spirit of the Lord and the Father of glory were one. I learned that that day because of the encounter. And the Lord taught me that that day. And so we can see this in the scripture. So Isaiah 61 says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And so it says in Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek, and He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim liberty to the captors and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord yeah. and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. So when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, I experienced much love. I'm sure you did, right? Yeah. When you were baptized with the Holy Spirit, you felt that love. You felt that peace. You felt His goodness. You experienced it, right? Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Now God says, come up higher. So He says, I have more love for you. I have more goodness for you. I have more shalom, more peace for you. Because He knows the hard days we're in and that they're going to increase. And He says, come up higher because I have filled you with my spirit. But now I want you to bring in the overflow because you're going to move in the fullness. So that means you're overflowing the whole time. Because you are full to overflowing. Amen. That's where he's taking us. Amen. And so there is more love there. There is more peace there. There is more victory there. There is more breakthrough there. There are many blessings there. Amen. And so, so he wants to take you. And so we can see that the Spirit of the Lord, the Father of glory, brings healing brings freedom, brings breakthrough. We can see that in this scripture. Now, we're going to go a step further, and it is this, that we can be changed from glory of glory by the Spirit of the Lord. Because it says in 2 Corinthians 3, we're going to read it, 2 Corinthians 3, now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. But we all with open face, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the Spirit of the Lord. So the glory of God is the manifest presence of God. So where we are changed from glory to glory, the manifest presence of God is in our midst. Amen. So that is not anymore a scripture, it's a reality. That is what the glory is. It is God manifesting His presence in our midst. That is why we're going to learn the importance in the coming lessons about the spirit upon and the spirit within. And when we become sensitive to the presence of God, we want to experience more and more of His presence upon us. And we will see greater miracles because we learn the sensitiveness in the spirit and more things are going to happen. The spirit of the Lord, yes, the seven spirits of God, manifest and demonstrate the power and glory of God on the earth. Amen. I'm going to say that again. The Spirit of the Lord, yes, the seven Spirit of God, manifest and demonstrate the power and glory of God on the earth. That is why Jesus Christ, His ministry came out of the fullness. Jesus Christ demonstrated the power and glory on the earth. Why? Because He made it from the fullness. He did not only have a word of knowledge, He had a river of knowledge. He did not only have a word of wisdom, He had a river of wisdom. And that is the difference with 1 Corinthians um, 12 and 14 about the gifts. Jesus did not just have a gift, He had a flow of the gifts the whole time. Because he had the spirit without measure. And that is what God is calling us to. To go from ankle deep to knee deep to waist deep. To learn to swim in the river of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you want to swim in the river of God? Amen. Do you want to surrender to the spirit of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Because he wants to heal you. Mm -hmm. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free deeper and deeper. 
Amen? Amen. And it's exciting. So, so Ephesians 1, verse 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And so the Spirit of the Lord releases to us the Father of glory. And so it says there that the Father of glory given to you the Spirit of wisdom and revelation that you might know Him more intimate. Yeah? This is what God wants to do. He wants to teach you the deeper moving of the heart of God in your life. Amen. When I went to Toronto, God moved in that place to the Spirit of the Lord or the Father heart of God in a mighty way. Many people who had many hurts and pains in their life, God healed them and set them free because there was a a higher level of the Holy Spirit moving in that place. God healed me of deep hurts. My mom had been born out of wedlock. So she grew up. I mean, think back in those days. It was very shameful if you would be born out of wedlock. And so she carried all this shame, all this guilt. All this condemnation of the people around her. She carried that. When she was 14, she got saved because someone who had been in the Welsh Revival came and preached in the north of the Netherlands and she gave her heart to Jesus. But she still carried a lot of that shame and guilt. And so when I was in the womb and, and born, I received a download of this illegitimate spirit and this shame and this guilt. And so when I went to Toronto, I lay under the fire and the glory of God. And God healed me from a lot of these feelings of condemnation, lack of love, abandonment, hurts. And when I came back, our daughter Elizabeth was two years of age. And there was a great distance between me and her because there had been a great distance between my mom and me. But because the Spirit of the Lord God, the Father of glory, was burning with such intense love on me in Toronto that a lot of these walls had come down. From that day on, me and my daughter, we got very close. She is still with us, living with us right now, and we are very close. Why? Because these walls came down. And God started to heal my wounds, my hurts, my pain. And so, this is the awesome thing. When you start to understand about the Father of glory, how much Abba Father loves you. Amen? Amen. He loves you so much. Amen. And, and this, you cannot understand with your mind. You have ex to experience this with your heart, with your spirit. Because this, this goes above even prayer. It, it Prayer brings us into this realm. Worship, but we worship Him before the throne. We start to encounter this glorious, intimate relationship with our Father, and it will heal our hearts. It will change us. And that's the beautiful thing from when the Spirit of the Lord is moving. Amen? Amen. So the Spirit of the Lord gives deep intimacy. We, we, we go into a deep, intimate relationship with God as when we are changed from glory to glory by the Father heart of God. It's the Father heart of God that brings us and changes us from glory to glory because the, now the Spirit, the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, is freedom. See, in the Hebrew... The word Lord is Adonai and Yahweh. So we see God the Father there. And so it says now, where Yahweh is, there is the Spirit 
And where the Spirit is, it brings freedom. Amen. 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 So Jesus also said, I am. So he was saying, I am Yahweh. So therefore the Spirit of Jesus also brings that freedom. Amen. He also brings that glory because the Father and the Son are one. And the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one. one. Not three. They're one. Amen. That is why you need to grow in oneness and throw off all the other religious things that have been taught to you. When you understand this oneness, the glory will explode in you. It will set you free. It will change you from glory to glory. And this is the exciting thing we're in today. That God is starting to do this and revisit us and pour out more of the Spirit on us. Amen. So that we grow in a deep, intimate relationship. Amen. Amen. So we have the menorah here. And so we have the seven, this is the picture of the seven spirits of God. So the middle one is the spirit of the Lord. And now, if you would be in the synagogue and they would have a menorah, they would, or you would be in the temple, they would have a little candle and they would call it a servant. And they will put this servant on and they will light this one. And then they will take that flame and put it on to this one. And then from this one to this one, from this one to this one. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Now, that means the main one, the green one, is the spirit of the Lord. And so we have a little name tags on it so you can later look if you want to study it. But this is the Spirit of the Lord. And Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And then it says that upon him was the Spirit of the Lord and then the Spirit of Wisdom, which is a red color. And, they, and the other six spirits, they come in pairs. So we see them here. So we have here the Spirit of Wisdom. So on the other side, we have the Spirit of Understanding or Revelation. You see? How it works. So then here we have the spirit of counsel, the orange one. And on the other side is indigo. So this was violet. And here, so violet, um, that was the spirit of revelation. And so here we have the color um, indigo. And so that is the spirit of might. Whereby mighty power happens while mighty miracles happen through. Yeah? And then we have here the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So this one is yellow and the spirit of the fear of the Lord is blue. Now, um, we have this follow order because of Isaiah 11 verse 2. But then... Ephesians 1, verse 17 and 18 shows actually we could put it around and have here this spirit and then the spirit of revelation and, and, and wisdom, we could put them here. And then, then we could put here these two and then the outside two could be power and, and, and um, counsel. Why? Because... Because it says this, I will read this from the Bible to you. God is really interesting. And this is where we are going. Ephesians. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 17, Ephesians 1, 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Now here, this, this is the first spirit, the main spirit, the Father of glory. You see that? Because the Father of glory is one with the spirit of the Lord. Yeah? So that's the main spirit here, the green one. Um, and then it says, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You see that? Right here, that is number two and three in the New Testament. Yes, yeah, so we have a right here 
in a different order. Yeah, so we could put here revelation and wisdom. So wisdom, we have them here, but we could, could turn them around. Put them, yeah, like that one here. Yeah, because it says here, it says that the, 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 the Father of glory would give unto you the spirit of wisdom. You hear that? Wisdom and revelation. And out of that, you get a deep knowledge of what? The intimate knowledge with God. You grow in intimacy. So the Spirit of the Lord is there to give you His love. By the Spirit of Revelation, He shows it, a wisdom, yeah, that you are, might know Him more intimately. And because they come in pairs, yeah, because they come in pairs, so we have here the Spirit of knowledge, and the one connected to it is the fear of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is right there. Because they, because they come in pairs. And then out of it, we're going to see this in the scripture, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, this is 18, that you might know what is the hope and the calling and what is the riches of His glory. You hear that again, glory, the Father of glory and the glory of the inheritance in the saints and what is the exceedingly greatness of His power. Everybody say power. 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 Toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Everybody say mighty, mighty. mighty power. Mighty, mighty power. power. Mighty you see power. that? And so here we have the spirit of might. You see that in indigo. Yeah. Indigo. You see that? Spirit of might. Mighty power. So when you study the scriptures, you will see that it says that Jesus did mighty miracles. Because of mighty power. Yeah. You see that? And that is how the end time evangelistic movements are going to move. The apostolic evangelists, the prophet, they're going to move with mighty power. Amen. Amen. This is what's going to happen. This is what we are waiting for. And that boldness is starting to move. Sunday night is why one guy came to me. He said, oh yeah, I have a deliverance ministry too. I said, great. And I, in the spirit I saw a demon in him. And I said, wow. I said, can I pray for you right now? He said, yeah. And then I started to cast demon after demon out of him. And people were watching what's going on. He was coughing, coughing. You know, the demons, one after another, is casting them out. Why? Because of the boldness. The spirit of might coming upon me to mm -hmm. set them free. Because he had a very strong testimony. He said he had tried to commit suicide five times. His friends had cut him loose from the rope he was hanging on. He heard, and he was a real broken man, and God wants to use him, and he's using him, and I had the grace to help him, to set, be more set free, so he can be filled more, to touch more lives. Mm. Amen. Amen. That's a good testimony. Amen. Amen. And, and that is what we, we read that, and it's right in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, for years when I was in Africa, Lord, what is that spirit of revelation? Lord, what is that spirit of wisdom? I don't understand this. How does this work? I thought it was the Holy Spirit. And now it says here, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation. I, I didn't understand it. And that is why we need this, the, um, the teaching about the seven spirits of God, so we start to understand it. And so the spirit of understanding gives us understanding about these things. Hallelujah. Amen. But it all works. It all starts with the spirit of the Lord. So we first need to come and be baptized deep in the spirit of the Lord, which releases the Father heart of God, which releases the love of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, so we can be full of mercy for the people who are hurting. Amen. Amen. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to be merciful and loving, and therefore we need to open ourselves, we need to surrender. Yeah. You see, the, 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 the river wants to take us more, but in order for us to go knee deep, and we want to go faster, we go and kneel, we go surrender more, we go to repent more, we give ourselves more to the Lord, so that we go deeper in the river of God. Yeah. For us to get there, I'm crying more and more. Because God is breaking me. Why? Because He wants me to surrender more to what to the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. See, the baptism of the Spirit just comes and fills you. But, the, but the, the rivers of God has to come up. They have to come up. 
to the baptism comes upon you. But for you to come in that river, you have to surrender. Amen. Amen. It's a process. As you surrender, as you clean yourself up more, more of God comes in your life. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, Jesus Christ is our example. Amen. And so when he came to Nazareth, and they had heard the fame about him, what he had done, he went into the synagogue, he took the scriptures, on the Sabbath day, and he read it to them. And that day's reading was Isaiah 61. And so he said, as he took it, he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is what he read. Yeah? He read it. So Luke 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up and read. And there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah. And he read, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight of the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm. Amen. And he said, Today, today is fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Now, why did he say that? What had happened? What had happened was this. Oh, some weeks before that, actually, a couple months before that. He went to the Jordan and John the Baptist was there. And Jesus came up to him and he said, I want to be baptized. And John the Baptist baptized him. And it says, the heavens opened. Let me read this to you from the scripture. Luke 3 verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heavens was open. And so, John says in John 1, 32 and 23, and John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. It abode of him. And I knew him not, but he that had sent me to baptize with water, the same upon me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is which baptized with the Holy Ghost. So John says he saw the heavens opened, the Spirit of God came as a dove upon Jesus. He didn't say the Holy Spirit, he said, the Spirit. Why? Because it's the Spirit of the Lord that came upon Him. You see that? Amen. The Spirit came upon Him. Hallelujah! And this is why Jesus Christ said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And that is why the miracles happened. And so Jesus Christ gives us the key for his ministry. He says, these miracles are happening, these signs are happening to my evangelistic meeting. It's because the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Amen. You see, he gives you the key. So he does not only want you to be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. No, he wants you to learn to live under an open heaven. An open heaven where the glory of God comes down upon your life. Where the fullness of the Spirit comes. Not only a trickle of the baptism of the Spirit. No, God wants you to come in the overflow. In the fullness of the Spirit. So, um, so there was this one scripture from Luke. And it says here, Jesus went to be filled with power. So Jesus went into the wilderness to fast. Because God wants, 
going to give a download of power. So he had been filled with the Spirit. And here it says, Luke 4 verse 1. And Jesus being full. Everybody say full. 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 And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. You see that? Jesus was full. Amen. Not, he was not just baptized. He was full. Why? Because he had the fullness. And that is why John 3 says that he had the Spirit without measure. You see, we get some of the Spirit when we are baptized. Jesus had it without measure. But now if we surrender more and more, we can learn to walk how Jesus walked. Amen. But you have to come and learn to kneel. Amen. You see, in the olden days, people would be kneeling in the house of God. Mm. Now people are too cool to kneel. <laughs> but God is bringing desperation and the, the too cool to go to school is going to go. And people are going to cry out. And they know God is holy. Mm -hmm. And we studied in the school of worship, Proskodonoi, which means bowing, kneeling, and kissing the King of glory. So we're going to learn again to kneel before the holy presence of God in desperation. Amen? Amen. And so that we can be full of the Spirit. And so when Jesus was tested in the desert, in the wilderness, He, he was victorious. And so it says about him when he came out, and Jesus went, uh, and it says, Luke 4 verse 14, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Everybody say power. power. Jesus went into the power of the Spirit in Galilee, and there went out fame of him through all the regions. You see that? Here we see the Spirit in the world. The spirit of might had come upon him. He had the spirit, the main spirit, but now it was all activated. So you can have one candle burning, but it doesn't mean that the others are burning. You, you see what I'm saying? One candle can be burning in your life, but it doesn't mean that all seven are burning. And to see the maximum move of God, we need all seven to move. So some people say, oh, I like this, I like that. And then we see them fall away because they didn't have the fullness totally cooperating in, in their spirit. They wanted a shortcut. But with the seven spirits of God, there is no shortcut. Amen. There's only death to self. There's death to me, I and myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amen. and and then we will change, be changed from glory to glory. See, it's not an easy uh, school, the school of learning to move in the seven spirit of God and evangelism. No, it is a, it's a school of surrendering, school of, of dying, so you grow in intimacy, so you grow in the love of God, so you grow in the power of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach, to teach, to set the broken out of free. So we see He gives us the key. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Therefore, I do the ministry. And so He gives us the keys of the kingdom. And out of it, out of the Spirit of the Lord being up your life, we can be like Christ as He did. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him he said, therefore he said, I am preaching the gospel. So even to do the evangelistic ministry, we need the spirit of the Lord God upon us to do what? To preach. Amen. Amen. Because there has to be conviction of sin. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of preachers are now just saying, oh, just come to Jesus, he's so nice. But that doesn't give you backbone. Because the spirit of the Lord has to come upon you and has to hit you like a lightning bolt. Yeah, so that you know you're a wicked sinner. So you know there was nothing good in you. So you know that you have to totally surrender. You see what I'm saying? Amen. See, when I, was, when I had a salvation experience, it only lasted four months. But when I had a lightning bolt hit me with that I'm no good, I'm a sinner, I need to repent, and then I was filled with fire, I've been on fire for 38 years. Amen. See, that's a difference. 
when I was shaken up and the light of God cut me to the heart that's where I surrendered I was baptized with the Holy Spirit of fire and I've been on fire ever since amen, amen. and so we need not only salvation we need redemption we need to learn to sing I am redeemed last week Sunday we sang I am redeemed I am redeemed you know and we really went for it and I talked to Simon and Simon said Nicholas I need to preach Sunday in the Baptist Church and he said please can you teach me that song you know he wanted to learn that I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb I am redeemed and I know I am you see because it's not just about salvation she redemption is has five five points to it and we have cheapened the message salvation is one of those five points and so so we need the spirit of the lord upon us to preach the message so that in the last days people will really come to christ and i'll have backbone and will arise and will see many many multitudes saved amen Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And then we, so we need the Spirit of the Lord God upon us to preach. And that's what Jesus did to what? To do what? Heal the brokenhearted, bring deliverance to the captives, recovery to the sight, sight of the blind, and to bring freedom to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. 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 And so the sick came to Jesus for healing, and he. He healed them. It says, Now, when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick, they brought them. And he laid hands on them and he healed them. And the devils came out, crying and saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. You see that? Jesus was a proof producer. He produced that he was the Son of God. And people came to him. They bowed their knees. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord God was upon him. Out of his fullness. You need to come in the fullness. The end time army is going to be people that learn to walk in the fullness amen. of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Let's just stand in the presence of God and open our hearts right now to surrender deeper so that, that, so that we are seeing more of the Spirit of the Lord come upon our lives. Receive right now. I'm going to pray right now. Father, I pray for everybody, Lord, watching, everybody here, Lord, to come and surrender more to the seven spirits of God, especially to the Spirit of the Lord today, Lord, so that they, they come and be cleansed to the blood of Jesus Christ. In a more mighty way, Lord, so that they will learn the power of the cross to daily surrender there where they haven't surrendered, that to have victory daily where they haven't gotten victory yet, to have freedom and deliverance and healing, Lord, at the cross of Christ daily where they need breakthroughs, freedom and healing. Lord, we pray that so that their room comes in their heart, so that the Spirit of the Lord will start burning upon them, so that they can say, The Spirit of the Lord of God is upon me. That they have the revelation, Lord, not only to be baptized with the Spirit, to be, to be in the overflow, to be overshadowed like Apostle Peter, which is kind of glory. And that's what we are praying for, so that the sick will be healed, the, 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 the demonic will be set free, Lord, and that we are full of joy and glory. We release that in this place. In Jesus Christ's name, and over the nations, we lose them now. Hallelujah! 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 Amen. Hallelujah.